Hey, everybody, welcome to our sonography overview. This lesson will introduce you to the overall concept of sonography, the primary components of the ultrasound system, walk you through the general process of performing a diagnostic scan, compare sonography to other modalities, and define important physical terms used in the field. So what is sonography? Diagnostic medical sonography, also known as ultrasound, is a non-invasive imaging technique that uses high-frequency sound waves to produce real-time images of the inside of the body. It is widely used in medical settings to evaluate soft tissues, organs, blood flow, and developing fetuses. Unlike radiography, sonography does not use ionizing radiation, so it is preferred in obstetrics. During an ultrasound exam, a small handheld device called a transducer emits sound waves into the body. These waves bounce off internal structures and return to the transducer, where they're processed by a computer to create visual images. Because it does not use ionizing radiation, sonography is considered a safe diagnostic tool, particularly in sensitive populations such as pregnant patients. Sonography is used across various specialties, including obstetrics and gynecology, cardiology, abdominal imaging, vascular studies, and musculoskeletal imaging. Its real-time imaging capability also makes sonography useful for guiding procedures like biopsies or fluid drainage. Let's take a closer look at an ultrasound transducer. The transducer is the device that both generates and receives ultrasound waves. Its basic parts include piezoelectric crystals, which convert electrical energy into mechanical sound waves and then turn the echoing sound waves back to electrical energy again. A matching layer, which improves the transmission of sound into the body. Backing material located behind the crystals, which dampens the vibrations of the crystals. And finally, the housing and cable. The outer casing protects the internal components and transmits signals between the transducer and the ultrasound system. The ultrasound system consists of the pulser, which sends electrical pulses to the transducer to create sound waves. The receiver, which amplifies and processes the returning echoes from the body. The processor, or scan converter, which converts analog signals to digital signals. The display, which converts the processed signals into a visual image. And the memory, or storage, which stores images and patient data. To understand how the system forms an image, it helps to think through the full cycle. The pulser sends an electrical signal to the piezoelectric elements inside the transducer. The elements vibrate and produce sound waves, which travel through the body. As these waves encounter tissues, some of the sound is reflected back to the transducer. The transducer elements then convert the returning echoes into electrical signals. These signals are processed into digital data, converted into a visual format, and displayed as an image in real time. There are also different modes of ultrasound imaging. Most routine imaging is grayscale, or B-mode, which displays the brightness of returning echoes to visualize anatomical structures. In contrast, Doppler ultrasound assesses motion, specifically the movement of blood. It measures the change in frequency of the sound waves as they reflect off moving blood cells. This frequency shift is used to calculate and display information about the speed and direction of blood flow, often using color overlays or spectral waveforms. While grayscale imaging shows shape, texture, and anatomy, Doppler imaging provides hemodynamic data, which is crucial in vascular and cardiac studies. It's also important to understand how the frequency of the ultrasound waves affects image quality and depth. High-frequency transducers, such as 10 to 15 MHz, produce images with excellent resolution, but are limited in how deeply the sound waves can penetrate. These are ideal for superficial structures like the thyroid, breast, or musculoskeletal tissues. Low-frequency transducers, such as 2 to 5 MHz, penetrate more deeply, making them suitable for deeper structures like the liver, kidneys, or fetus in later stages of pregnancy, though with less detail. Remember, this is just an overview, and we will dive deeper on each subject in their own lessons. Next, there are terms that describe sound waves, like rarefaction, compression, frequency, and wavelength. Rarefaction is the portion of a sound wave where the particles are spread apart while compression is the portion of a sound wave where particles are pushed together. It is these terms which describe how sound waves are propagated through a medium, like body tissue. Frequency is the number of cycles per second, measured in hertz. Wavelength is the distance between two consecutive compressions or rarefactions. 
Then there are terms related to attenuation, which is the loss of sound energy as it travels through tissue. Three types of attenuation are absorption, which is the conversion of ultrasound energy into heat within tissue, reflection, which is sound bouncing back to the transducer, and scatter, which occurs when the ultrasound beam is deflected in multiple directions. Understanding attenuation is crucial because it directly affects image quality. Too much attenuation can limit how deeply we can see into the body, while reflection and scatter determine how much useful information returns to the transducer to create a diagnostic image. These interactions help shape the brightness, contrast, and visibility of internal structures on the ultrasound display. Each of these terms plays a role in understanding how sound behaves in the body and affects image formation. We will be going into depth about each of these terms in other lessons. In summary, ultrasound, also known as diagnostic medical sonography, is a non-invasive imaging technique that uses high-frequency sound waves to produce real-time images of the inside of the body. A small handheld device called a transducer emits sound waves into the body. These waves bounce off internal structures and return to the transducer where they are processed by a computer to create visual images. The components of a transducer are the piezoelectric crystals, the matching layer, the backing material, and the housing and cable. The ultrasound system consists of the pulser, the receiver, the processor or scan converter, the display, and the memory or storage.